It's been said that the human voice is the most complex instrument known to exist and therefore, arguably, the most difficult instrument to learn to master. But what makes singing so challenging to learn? Well, in this video, we're going to look at how your voice works so you can achieve better results with your singing voice. Let's get started. Sound check. When it comes to singing, most people start off by opening the mouths and <laughs> hoping for the best. A lot of singers really don't understand how their voice works and more importantly, how to get the most out of their voice for singing. For instance, did you know that the human voice is the only instrument on the planet with two points of tuning? It's true, but more about that soon because singing is not just about learning to sing in tune. Developing the singing voice requires the voice user to cultivate the management of four separate interconnected biomechanical systems. Each of these systems is complex in its own right, still it's only when the four components work together interdependently that we can create musical sounds. Actually, most instruments work in this way. Scott McCoy explains that all musical instruments, including the human voice, have at least four things in common, consisting of the power source, sound source, resonator, and system for articulation. When applied to the human voice, the power source is the breath, the sound source is the vocal folds, the resonator is the vocal tract, and the articulation system consists primarily of the tongue and lips. To understand how these four distinct systems interrelate, we need to look at each one separately. Don't worry, I won't let this go uh, get too nerdy, but I do want to equip you with the knowledge that I know will empower your vocal development. So let's look at the power source first, your breath. There are numerous misconceptions around breathing for singing, many of which stem from an era when we didn't know a lot about human anatomy and biomechanics. A simple way to think about how breath fuels the voice is to think about a party balloon a bit like this one. So here we have our blown up balloon and we can think of this as one lung, but in fact, our lungs are made up of millions of little balloons called alveoli. Those little sacs all collectively make up the lung. And what we have here, let's, let's go back to thinking about this as just one, uh, one lung. Obviously, the balloon is made of a, a latex rubber. And when I blow into it, I'm actually forcing that, that pressure internally to increase. There is an external pressure from the elastic response of the, the latex. And all of that wants to cause the air to leave the balloon and re-enter the pressure in the room, which is lower. And so what we get, you know I'm gonna do it. When the air is released, let's say this is our vocal tract. When the air is released through the vocal tract, up through the larynx, out past the vocal folds, in this case, our vocal folds are two pieces of uh, latex in the, uh, on either edge of the balloon. We get that really high buzz. But what will happen is if we get to a point where there's no longer any um, exerted pressure from underneath those two points, we start to lose. Can you hear how the pressure is dying off? And so the sound is starting to, to die off also. And that's what we're doing with our breath when we create sound. Our lungs fill with air, the air then travels through the larynx, the vocal folds come together in a, a high oscillation and form a rudimentary buzz and then exit into the vocal tract. And that, in very, very simple terms, is how our breath is working to fuel the voice. And this brings us to the second component of the sound source, often referred to as the vibrator. And instead of latex edges coming together, like we saw with the balloon, the human voice has two complex structures called 
vocal folds. And these two vocal folds are housed within the larynx, which sits in the middle of your neck, just around about here. Now, remember how I said earlier that the human voice has two points of tuning? Well, the first point of tuning occurs at the point of the vocal folds. For example, for me to tune my voice to the same note as the orchestra uses to tune before a symphony, I would need to sing an A4, this note here. The frequency of A4 is 440 hertz. For my voice to sing A4, my vocal folds need to oscillate 440 times per second. Now, we don't have time in this video to unpack and fully explain the complexity of vocal fold motion, but for now, it's enough to know that when the vocal folds create the desired fundamental frequency, the sound leaves the vocal folds as a raw and rudimentary buzz, not, not unlike the harsh sound we made with the balloon earlier. To make that buzz into a beautiful sounding voice, it has to be tuned a second time, and we do this using the third component, the resonator. Gillianne Kays notes that by manipulating the tongue, the lips and the jaw, you can tune the oral cavity to enhance specific resonances. You see, embedded in the raw vocal fold buzz are additional frequencies known as overtones. When combined with the target frequency, the fundamental pitch and overtones, also known as harmonics, form a complex sound. Here we see the overtone series of an A4. In this graphic, we can see 16 harmonics, including the fundamental frequency, the first harmonic. Now, depending on how the overtone series is managed, human beings, using our malleable vocal tracks, can shape and filter the overtone series, which in turn generates formants. The vocal tract is capable of producing many formants, which are labelled sequentially by ascending pitch. The first two, F1 and F2, are used to create vowels. Higher formants contribute to the overall timbre and individual characteristics of the voice. So, as singers, we must first accurately generate pitch, the first point of tuning, then we also need to tune the pitch as it is resonated through the vocal tract. And this resonance pitch, our second point of tuning, is in a constant state of flux due to the ever-changing shapes of the vocal tract. Johann Sundberg gives us another way to think about it, writing, one could also say that a resonator resonates at certain frequencies or that it possesses resonances, formants in the case of the vocal tract, at certain frequencies. Thus, the ability of the vocal tract to transmit sound is greatest at the formant frequencies. <laughs> I won't boggle your mind any further with talk of resonance because we have one more voice component to consider, articulators. Articulation is the name for the manoeuvres made in order to adjust the shape of the vocal tract during phonation. This is achieved by means of the articulators, the lips, the tongue, the jaw, the vellum and the larynx. As we've already seen, the vocal tract plays a significant role in shaping resonant vowels, but we need more than vowels to communicate. You see, your vocal tract isn't just a tube with an opening at each end. In fact, the vocal tract has a single starting point, the glottis, and branches into two stems, one stem going into the mouth and ending at the lips, while the other moves into the nasal passages ending at the outer edges of the nostrils. And along the way, the resonance is shaped not only into vowels, but into consonants also. The primary articulators, the tongue and the lips, interact with other articulatory points, the teeth, hard and soft palates, to form intelligible sound. And we also use our articulators to assist with things like dynamics and musical expression. Interestingly, we can even think of our breath management as playing a role in articulation when we consider the interplay between airflow and the activity of the glottis. And this is because the four components of the vocal system are non-linear. That is, each component is interacting with the other three components continually. Of course, 
it all starts with the air. So if you'd like to learn more about managing your breath for better singing, you can click on this video and I'll show you how to develop the first component, your vocal power source. I'll see you again soon. I'm Dr. Dan, sing well.